Welcome to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast here in Australia. As you can see, I'm all rugged up. Winter has finally bitten us here. We've had a few days where, you know, we've got out of bed to just above zero, which is not good here for the Gold Coast. We like sunshine and beach weather and, and swimwear, not not jumpers and overcoats and sitting in front of a heater. But anyway, that's enough of my grizzling about the weather. I hope wherever you are in this world of ours that you've been having a really interesting week. And interesting is one of those ambiguous words, isn't it? It's a time where we sort of, people say, well, what do you mean by interesting, Amanda? Well, it's been an interesting week. I've had so many people inboxing me saying, look, I really found this new moon really quite difficult. Why was it bringing up so many things into my thought patterns? I thought I dealt with a lot of old stuff. And it's interesting, a new moon is supposed to be about attracting new things to us. It almost worked like a full moon this time. And I think this is because... We can't start new things unless we've dealt with the past. If we haven't released, let go of, dealt with, got rid of, moved it out of our brain, moved it out of our our thought bubbles, our light bulb moments, our whatevers, then how can we have new ideas coming in? (coughs) So that's the reasons why I believe that we had the new moon sort of almost behaving like a full moon. It was to clear things out so that we could make way for new things. Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat now. Typical communication issue, isn't it? When we start talking about communication and issues we might not have dealt with. Hopefully I'm leading by example that I dealt with all mine. <coughs> but maybe not by my coughing, but I excuse myself. Um, so this week it leads me on to the tarot card of the week, which I think is very apt following the new moon. And it's the card of the hermit. Now, this is the card of needing to do is loneliness, unattached, soul-searching time is needed, or time alone. Now, this is basically what this new moon in Gemini did that was there Thursday, Friday, Saturday of last week, was asking us to honour that, was to spend some time alone, release anything out of our minds we didn't need anymore, but also allow ourselves some still time so that the light bulb moments could happen. So even though we're a few days on past the new moon, and the moon is now actually in the sign of Virgo. It's like everybody's analysing and pulling everything to bits at the moment on an emotional level. And I'm pleased to say for a change, ladies, it's affecting the male population. The girls have got their their act together. It's the boys' turn. And they're the ones that are really struggling with things from their past, things that they can't control. Maybe the you know beating of the chest and the macho male thing, I need to dominate, I need to control, I need to be the boss. And they're finding out now that they can't. Boy, oh boy, haven't they got a little bit to catch up on? Us girls have known that for a long time. You know, there's a lot of things you can't control in life, a lot of things you can't change. You go with the flow. And that's what I think sometimes it's about. It's not always about right or wrong or being able to dominate or control something. It's learning to accept it and accept what we can change and what we can't change. And there's been many famous affirmations and poets and story writers and movie producers and songwriters that have used those words in their songs about, you know, just go with the flow, you know, some things we just can't control. So it's a really, it, it leads me on to the reasons why I've chosen a particular candle I did this week. And bear in mind, I choose, I have my formula worked out until the end of the year of what candle we're going to feature on each week. And it's interesting how things always line up. And this week, I had done this months ago, I had chosen the protection candle. Now, the protection candle is about protecting our energy. Now, a lot of people sort of say to me, oh, Amanda, I'm not psychic. I'm not necessarily going to be working with psychic stuff. So why would I need a protection candle? Well, let me assure you, you breathe, you're part participating in this world, you're participating in life. So therefore, you are a participant, whether you like it or not, in energy. Energy is part of what the psychic world is, is energy. And we are all surrounded by energy, whether it's positive, negative or indifferent. We all come across it in our day-to-day lives. When we go to the market, when we go to work, when we take the dog for a walk, when we drop the kids off at school, we go shopping, we do whatever. Even talking to someone on the phone or participating even in social media is a transfer of energy. So we need to be protecting our energy fields. We need to be protecting ourselves. And if I can sort of share with you a famous statement from a a very famous um, psychic medium around the world, John Edward. And if you watch the show regularly, you'll know I'm a huge fan of John's and I got the good fortune to meet him last year and I'll go into another one of his events this year. And he calls it psychic sunscreen. Now, I really think that's an amazing title to call 
needing to protect ourselves on an energetic level. He says, have you got your psychic sunscreen on for the day? And he uses many various different forms of his psychic sunscreen. And some of those are meditation and some of those are just popping yourself into a bubble or some sort of protective sort of thing in your mind. Today, I want to teach you to work with a protection candle. Now, the reasons why I like to work with a protection candle versus some of the other methods is because I, I suppose I love to work with candles and I always have done. And I like the flicker of the flame and the, the warmth and the protection that it immediately gives me no matter what type of candle that I'm burning. But a protection candle more than ever, as you're going to light your candle, you can stop and you can focus on it and just staring into the flame for a couple of minutes and allowing yourself to imagine that you're putting your protection up. Now, your protection might be something as simple as visualising yourself in a lovely place in nature, somewhere where you feel very safe, where you feel very secure, you know, your favourite lagoon, your favourite scene at the beach or your favourite um, walk in the woods and, and, and stopping by a stream or, you know, just standing there hugging a tree. Whatever is your vision of where you feel safe and protected, um, visualise that in your mind. Some people use a gold triangle, some people use a fur coat, some people use a car, some people use their bed. Some people say, I stand under a golden shower of rain. Now, why am I using the word gold? Gold, in my opinion, is the highest form of protection. I know a lot of people are taught white protection and I'm white light protection, and I'm not going to say that it's not good enough. I'm going to say many, many, many moons ago when I first started working with protection, which wasn't for probably the first half of my psychic career, I must admit, I was taught gold, as gold as being the highest, followed by silver. And then I was taught there was a number of different other steps that went down to white. And white, as I was taught, was the entry level, was the purity of the light. But if you wanted the ultimate protection, you always went to the top. So for many years now, I've taught people that if you're a gold person, work with gold. If you're a silver person, work with silver. For those of you that still want to work with your white light, that's perfectly fine. Protection and everything that we do with energy or any psychic work is always about what feels right to you. If it doesn't feel right to you, then throw it out the window and take on board what does. Because by working with what feels the strongest for you is going to give you the best outcome. And the same is to be said with a protection candle. So a protection candle we can light every single day. We can have it going in the background. Yes, you know, 15 minutes probably minimum, two hours maximum. But if you're going to be working with a protection candle, and I'll say this every week and I'll take the lid off, if you have an extra large candle, you'll see it's got two wicks in there, a little bit hard to see when it's white. But I burn one side one day and one side the next day. That way you get a longer burn time. You'll get up to 100 hours out of your candle versus 60 hours if you burn the two wicks together. As I've said many, many times before, the glass containers do get hot. They can crack with the changes of temperature. And this is one of the reasons why I like to burn one side of the wick one day and one the other side. Plus, it also gives you a longer burn time. And I'm always conscious about us making our resources go as far as we can. That way, we're saving the planet a little bit more, even though these are made out of soy and it's a renewable soy and it's the best soy wax that money can buy and things like that. And we use lead-free wicks. We still need to be aware of our resources. The world does not have unlimited resources. So that's our extra large candle. For those of you that may be travelling or might want to take one to work, this week I've made up a, a gift box of protection candles. These will burn for 15 hours each approximately. These are only little candles. They only have one wick in them. They do have the glass lid. You can make up your protection. You can make up your box of three soy candles. They don't all have to be protection. There's 28 in the range. So if you head to my website, www.amandahallpsychic.com.au, You'll find a page there where there's three different candles in a box. That's where you're able to make your choice of your three choices. Otherwise, if you just want protection candles, you head to the protection candle page. All candles must be placed on a coaster. Always put something between you and the, and the candle that you're burning. Don't ever put a candle directly on a table because if you do that, if we put a candle directly on a table, we can burn things. So we always put it on a coaster so that we're not going to burn the furniture. Never leave a candle unattended. Always make sure that your candles are not in a direct draft, under air conditioning vents, up near open windows, curtains, things like that, children and dogs. Very important. We don't want to burn the house down just because we're burning a candle. For those of you that may not want to burn a candle, 
we have what's known, you can pick these up at your local supermarket or your local variety store. These are called wax warmers or melt warmers. They're electric, they have a little button on the side that you plug it in, turn it on to the electricity. Take about a half a teaspoon of your wax out of your candle and put it into your melt warmer every day. Again, same principle supply, put it on a, a coaster because again, we don't want to damage the furniture by, you know, they, they do get warm and we're, we're working with electricity. This you can leave going all day. I quite often just have a, a, mat, a melt warmer going in a room of my house where I have the protection in it all the time. Then I have a second one where I'm using, where I'm changing the wax frequently as I want to change my intentions or the things that I want to bring into my life. But I pretty much have a protection melt warmer going constantly in my, my working hours in my office because that way then I know when I go to work with the psychic protection or any sort of energy or I have a conversation with someone on the phone or I'm on social media that I am completely protected. So it's a good way of just being able to focus that couple of minutes, going into a meditative state, choosing a scene or something that works for you as you're sort of even staring into the, the melt warmer, that's fine. So that's about protection. There's many different types of protection. I'm sure you can Google many other answers on protection, but that's the way I like to work. I like to keep everything simple, idiot-proof, all over and done within a couple of minutes. We are all very, very busy. So moving the show along, we always feature... Um, a little trip around the universe and this week I want to share with you we have the planet Venus is conjunct or holding hands you know we talk about this often holding hands with what's known as the North Node in an astrology chart and these are in the energies of Leo now the first question I'm going to hear you ask is what on earth is a North Node Amanda I don't know what you're talking about is it a swear word are you talking about something that I need to get a dictionary out and find out what it means. Well, no, number one, it's not a swear word. Number two, it's not a planet. And number three, it is something that astrologers use quite often because it's part of the karmic area of a chart. It's where we look at it's the nodes of the moon. So it's what we bring into this lifetime that we're aspiring to achieve. If we were looking at your chart as an individual person, we would look at that, we would look at the house, we would look at the energy and we'd say, what is this person's purpose here on earth? What are they aspiring to achieve or accomplish this lifetime round? What are the karmic lessons? What are the things that they've brought in that they maybe need to overcome or fix up or rectify as their karmic lessons before they can achieve this? So it's a very powerful area of the chart. I will later on in you know a show maybe next year go into sort of talking a little bit more about the north and south nodes and we may do a special feature if everybody shows some interest in it on it going through the signs so that you have a little bit more of an understanding. I know we've already done planets and we've done houses and we've done many things and for the moment we're focusing on famous singers throughout the Zodiac and after that's finished, I want to look at actors. I want to sort of keep it a little bit fun for a while and then we'll go back to some serious lessons on astrology. So what does it mean for everybody this week? As we've got Venus, the planet of love and affection, conjunct or holding hands, the north node in Leo. So we know Venus is the planet of love and affection and we know that it makes our heart sing and we know that we all go a bit jelly-legged and sort of say, oh, wow, I'd like love in my life if I don't have it or I'd like to reignite some love in my existing relationship. How can I do this when it's conjunct the north node? Well, quite often what it means here, and particularly in Leo, and we know anything to do with Leo is done in a flamboyant, outrageous, over-the-top sort of energy. It's sort of the ability to perform, take the stage, show off, do it in a, a, a mind-boggling, glittery, special, dynamic sort of way. So how does this affect us personally? Okay. For those of you that may not have love in your life at the moment, now is the perfect time to get out and strut your stuff. Get out and show the world what you're made of. Get your best outfit on, whether it's, you know, a dress, handbag, shoes, suit for the guys. Get out and go to places where you know that you can meet people. There's no point in getting up and going out and going to the, um, the dress shop hoping to meet a man. There's not too many men in there buying dresses unless they're buying them for a partner or a wife already. So you need to go to places where there is members of the opposite sex or the type of people that you're trying to attract and the ability to meet with a possible relationship in mind. It's a time then when we can karmically meet somebody that we're meant to meet that 
is somebody that's been destined for us to meet. So it may not always be an easy relationship and it may not be packaged in quite the way that you think because it is a conjunction. So it says that we've got some issues or some, you know, in your face sort of stuff that we need to deal with here. And maybe it's really asking us to look at what it is that we want in a relationship. Maybe this is the reasons why we're single. Maybe our past ways of looking at relationships is outdated and we need to approach it in a different sort of way. It doesn't necessarily mean everybody you meet is going to be flamboyant and dress like Elton John with, you know, the big wild glasses or something like that. It just means that the person's going to be very different, probably have an opinion, and the two of you will have a great time. For those of us that are already in committed relationships, this is the time to put a bit of sparkle back into your relationship. If you feel things have been a bit dull lately, then maybe plan a, a fabulous dinner party where everybody's got to come dressed up as their favourite entertainer. Make it an over-the-top sort of event. Make it a karaoke night. Do something different. Make everybody laugh. It's the time to put some fun and sparkle back into our lives, and it's really, really very important. Okay, so we've got to quickly move things along. We also have to be looking at our famous singer of the week this week, and I'm really proud and excited to say it's my ultimate favourite singer of all time, and I'm a proud Aussie as I announced the fact that this week we're going to be working with John Farnham. And for those of you that have watched the show before, you know he's my ultimate, te my teeny bopper idol, probably before I was a teenager, I was in love with him, I think I was about all of eight. He's been around singing in Australia for over five decades, so that gives you some idea. He started when he was one. Um, that he's been around a very, very long time. For those people in the USA, you may have known him as the second lead singer in the early 80s of the Little River Band, who were quite big over there, an Aussie band that people really sort of flocked to in the US. John took over that the reins of that after the previous um, gentleman quit, and John took over the lead for that for a couple of years, and then he left that band and he went on to reinvent himself and bring out an album that he'd never done this type of work before because here in Australia he was known for a particular song that I know he was embarrassed about for a long time called Sadie the Cleaning Lady and it was a zippy hip hop pop happening sort of ditty type of song that everybody loved and everybody never really forgot that he ever sang that and didn't really take a lot of notice of the good work he did after that. So that title and that song followed him around forever and he really got over it and sick of it. Nobody would put his music on the radio. So when he brought out an album in 1986 called Whispering Jack, they had to put it in a plain paper packaging and his name nowhere near it to get it played on the radio. And it was sheerly by, sheer by the song that was made the single off the album called You're the Voice that people kept ringing up and requesting and requesting and requesting. And it went to number one very, very quickly. It spent 25 weeks in the charts here at number one. It's been a huge seller. It's been the second biggest selling album here in Australia. And interestingly enough, the one that holds the number one spot is Bad Out of Hell. So there you go. So, But he holds the number two spot. John Farnham was born in England. We we like to adopt people from around the world and call them our own. I'm proud to say he's now a nationalised Australian. But he has done so much for the Australian music industry here. He's always stayed true to his faith of what he believed in, a good song, a good melody, you write good lyrics, people will listen, people will follow. And he's got, you know, people attending concerts now from babies in arms up to about 90. So that's a testament to the work that this man has done over the years. And he's in the Australian Hall of Fame here for music, and we call him affectionately the voice here, and he is. And I really do think he has a powerful voice. You get a chance, look, check him out on YouTube and check out You're the Voice. Okay, so moving right along, we're going to take our first caller and we've got Sandy in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Are you there, Sandy? Oh, Angela in Texas, I beg your pardon. We've got Angela in Texas. Oh, I do apologise. I had my wrong screen up. I was taking last week's caller. I do apologise. Angela, are you there? Yes. How are you tonight? How can I help you, Angela? Well, I've had some family members pass over, and I just wanted to see if, uh, how they're doing. Darling, look, to answer your question, family members are always okay. I've never had anyone come through and tell me they're having a rotten time on the other side. I might stand corrected <laughs> one day, but they're always okay. So that's a very important question that everybody sort of asks is, I just want to know that they're okay. And the stock standard answer to that is, yes, they're all always okay. Do you have a question that I can answer? And if one of them wants to pop through, they'll interrupt and give me 
their version of events if they feel the need. How's that, Angela? Um, I'm trying to find out what happened with my mother because she passed suddenly. She passed suddenly, did she? Yes. And we're coming up on our anniversary date. Okay, was your mother a very forthright sort of person? Can you repeat that? Was your mother a very forthright sort of person? Like, if she didn't want to answer a question, you just you just knew and you didn't go there, she'd say no and that's it? Yeah. Well, that's what she's showing me. She's showing me the sign of, we're not going there, it's none of your business. Hmm. And I, I don't think she's doing that to be flippant or to be rude in any way. I think she's sort of saying, let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the fact that I'm here. I'm with you. I see what's going on. She keeps showing me that there's a new house for you. So are you house hunting? Have you been looking for something? No, I haven't. Are you thinking about it, though? Because she's showing me a new house. Okay. And that's all she's showing me. When you asked about what caused her to, you know, her passing, she just literally told me it was none of our business and, you know, this is what I've got to tell you. There's a new house. Or was she moving house or something when this happened? She just keeps showing me this house. No. I I moved, but I moved back in March. Yeah, so, what, this year? Yes. Yeah, but when she when she passed, was she in the process of moving or she talked about it? Is that the reference to the no, house or was she talking? No, okay. Well, then I don't think you're staying where you are. I hope you didn't buy it because she keeps showing me a brand new house. All right. I've got a house with a pitched roof, with a roof like that, and, and it's a very okay. pretty looking house. Is that the one you're mm -hmm. in now? No, ma'am. No, okay, because that's what she's showing me is this pretty looking house with a pitched roof and it's got a, a picket fence at the front. And that's all she's showing me. She's not giving me anything else and she's got a big smile on her face. So obviously that's yeah. something that she's, work, she's working on for you. But she's also showing me that there's lots of changes coming up in your life this year and that it's about time that you had some personal happiness. It's time that you let go yeah. of your sadness. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I hope that yes, helps, sweetie. I'm sorry that she that she didn't give me the the information maybe that you wanted, but she's very excited about this house. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Angela. We're going on to Eva in Detroit, in Michigan. Are you there, Eva? Yes, I am. Hi, Amanda. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Eve. How can we help you, sweetie? Um, I wanted to know if it's possible if you can connect with my soulmate. He's in heaven. Okay, sweetie. It's very difficult to try and connect with somebody that you specifically want to do in such a short space of time. What I can tell you is that he's sending me pink hearts and he's sending me pink roses, so that's his way of acknowledging that you're still his sweetheart, he still loves you, he still misses you. He's also showing me that there's some endings coming up in your life. So is there two things that you need to bring to a close now? Uh, yeah, a karmic relationship. Okay, because he's showing me the symbol of two closures or two things coming to an end. And then right behind that, he's showing me the pink hearts and the, and the pink roses again. So whatever your decision is, he's right behind you. He's right with you. He He's giving you his blessing. He doesn't want to see you on your own, obviously but he doesn't want you staying in a situation that's not right for you too. He's always around you, and I mean always. Every single moment of every single day, he's there. But he's also sort of showing me that there's two candles. So is it somebody's birthday coming up? Um, two celebrations or something um, coming close together? Um, we just had a family reunion a few weeks ago, but I'm traveling out of town for another family reunion in August. Oh, okay. That must be what it is because he was showing me the two celebrations, the two candles sort of almost together. So that's good. He's, he's there with you. He's having a great time at these family reunions. Yeah, the family reunion went really well. I'm just, yeah, but he's having, life is he's good being good one of his muses, you know. 
And that's the message I wanted to let him know. One of many muses. Yeah, but he's not necessarily coming through with any other messages other than he's having a good time and he's telling me that he's there with you and he's going to be tickling your ear or something like that. You know, if you feel like somebody's playing with your hair, just know it's him. He's just letting you know he's okay. there. Okay. But he's having a great time Thanks. at all these parties. <laughs> okay, lovely to speak with you, Eva. Okay, we've come to the end of the show again. For those of you that want to learn a little bit more about protection, you can join me over on Facebook Live in a few minutes. I'll be doing a, a, a live, a 20-minute presentation on protection. So if you head to my Facebook page, Amanda Hall, you'll find it there. And, of course, we'll have the same formula next week. We'll have the Simply Tarot card of the week, the candle of the week. We'll have our famous singer of the week. We'll also have our little trip around the universe. For those of you that want to join our newsletter, you can sign up at my website, www.amandahallpsychic.com.au, and that entitles you to a free astrology chart that can be emailed anywhere in the world. You're under no obligation to buy anything. If you want to book a personal reading with me, and you, when you get to the checkout, if you type in the word RADIO in capital letters, you will find you'll get a discount there for any of our services and courses. So we really do want to thank you for joining us here each week. Um, we have an absolutely fabulous time working with you. If there's anything you'd particularly like me to discuss on the show, please put personal message me on Facebook and I will endeavour to weave it into the show over the coming weeks. So have an absolutely fantastic time wherever you are in this world of ours and don't forget to be kind to somebody. Give them a smile, open a car door. Your little gesture of kindness can mean the world to someone else and really bring a smile to their face. Have an absolutely fantastic time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.